plastic nursery containers have become a standard in the industry because they are lightweight, durable, work well with automation, and can be reused or recycled. Traditionally, virgin petroleum-based resins are used to manufacture the various types of plastic containers. However, petroleum-based plastics are subject to the whim of rapidly changing availability and price of petroleum, leading to considerable variation in plastic container costs. As a result, some growers have recognized the value of buying containers back from their customers. We have always bought back pots from our customers. I say buy, we don't actually pay them money. We give them a credit that they can use toward purchasing a plant. And we don't buy them back at the full new price. We pay them half or less. Lately, we have so many pots that are stacking up, we're paying a very low amount for pots. But the retailers, the landscapers, that are accumulating the pots are happy to get them back to us because they know we're going to reuse them, we're going to keep them out of a dump, and the plant doesn't know whether it's in a new pot or used pot, it'll grow just as well. Higher rates of plastic nursery container recycling and greater use of recycled plastics in containers could substantially increase the sustainability of using petroleum-based plastic containers. And although there are significant obstacles to recycling plastic pots, an enterprising grower can make a difference. Now, there is a point when the pots can no longer be used. If they're cracked, broken, at that point, we're gonna be recycling them. There are more and more plastic companies that are willing to take back your pots. So we've been in contact with a company from Michigan, and they said that when they bring pots down to Florida, new pots, they will take back the used pots as long as we follow certain rules. We have to have them palletized. We're going to have to have them shrink wrap so they don't shift around. And we're going to have to be able to load them onto their flatbed trailers. But even more than that, we have to separate out the different types of plastic. On the bottom of every pot, you'll see that there's a number surrounded by a triangle. It could be a two, a five, or six. They'll take it back mixed, but they won't pay you as much money. They will buy these pots back from you. But you're not going to get rich selling the pots and trays. What it'll do is it'll cover the expense of all the extra work you're going to have to do to get rid of the pots and keep them out of a dumpster. Today, plastic nursery containers often include recycled content, and some containers are completely made from recycled plastics. Although plastic containers were rarely recycled in the past, there is movement towards assisting consumers with recycling these containers. Yet, given the volume of plastic containers in the industry, Studies have shown containers made from alternatives to petroleum-based products are becoming more appealing to consumers and growers. Manufacturers have recognized this trend and are now producing alternatives known as eco or bio containers. These alternative containers are made from a variety of materials which are typically plant-based or organic materials that are naturally fibrous or are chopped or ground and then molded and held together by adhesives and binders. The materials include rice hulls, coconut husks, and cardboard and fiber. Ideally, these containers must be able to biodegrade when planted or decompose in a compost pile when discarded to avoid adding to landfill waste. Growers can also install equipment on site, which combines planting media with decomposable paper-based wrappers to provide a variety of container solutions. This can lead to labor savings at various steps in the cultivation process from propagation through final planting. Some of the sustainable practices that we conduct here at Clinton Nurseries are examples of the biodegradable pots. These are particular ones are made from rice hulls. Um, we also have the ones that not only can be grown and sold in this size, but we also have the slotted side for production and propagation. And therefore it also produces a very nice root system, which is air pruned. These plant, these pots do not go into a landfill as other plastic products do and fill up our world with plastic so therefore with by using biodegradable pots as this one that is made by summit plastics we basically have 
um, an opportunity to go stronger in our nursery in this. At this time, we are doing it as a trial, and so far we really like the results. The pot and everything is supposed to be able to plant in, the homeowner can use it as to go ahead and plant it into their landscape. However, they say to actually crush it, and you can actually crush it like this, and it goes all over, and it goes into the, to the soil and biodegrades, and therefore is uh, much better to use other than to have a plastic pot going into your trash can. While a variety of options have been presented here, growers should understand that the lifespan of alternative or biocontainers depends on container components and additives and should be matched to the crop production cycle. The good news is that studies have shown that consumers recognize the value of these alternatives and are willing to pay more when given a choice. And that's good for business and the environment. To find additional information, please refer to this document and others which are available on the project website.